Hi there, this is Sabre Crypto. Okay, I hope your day is going well. Uh, I just want to quickly just say thank you to Pepsi TV, who just staked hundreds of pay in my shopping pool. And uh, for that, I'm going to send you 100 Zoid pay. So let's just do that. Zoid pay. Okay, that's your address there. 100 Zoid pay. And, and thank you very much. It was, uh, it was good to see your, uh, your little message. It was, uh, it was really nice. And uh, yeah, it's been about a year since we started the whole MyR journey. And uh, I think it's been it's been fun. Not quite what I expected. It's kind of um, yeah. There's been some ups and some downs. I didn't really expect the bear market to kick in like it did, but it definitely did, didn't it? Anyway, this uh, transaction seems to be taking a little while. Why is that? That's good. Transaction confirmed. Okay. So if you want to know what that's all about, you can go to savercrypto.org/freecrypto. Basically, what it is is if you haven't staked in my shopping pool yet. Uh, if you stake 100 Zoid Pay, I'll give you 100 Zoid Pay. So it's free money, and you can do what you like with that 100 Zoid Pay. You can you know you don't have to restake it. I'll obviously, suggest you do, but like, uh, but if you want to just convert it to e gold and spend it on something you can do or whatever you like. Uh, now in this now this video as well, um, Crypto Chris Texas said, um, keep an eye on Jex Exchange. Yeah, I believe Jex uh, Exchange is going to be open for a few more days more than the Loxmex Exchange. And I believe you do get a best, better rate when changing eGold to LKMEX. Uh, that said, I hadn't used it, so I just stuck with what I knew, but it might be something worth looking at. Now, YS6425 said, can you make a video showing how to transfer UTK from Qcoin ETH to MyR? Okay, now I was going to do this a while ago, and then I looked at it again today and I realised why I didn't. And the reason is, is because the only way you can export uh, UTK, the only way you can withdraw it is using the Ethereum network. Now, the problem with that is you end up paying Ethereum gas fees. And as I was going to do it just as a little demo, you know, with like, I don't know, 50 bucks worth of uh, UTK, uh, I didn't want to pay whatever in uh, Ethereum gas fees. So uh, I'm not going to do that. But basically what you do, you can, you can withdraw it from Qcoin using the Ethereum network and you can withdraw it to MetaMask. If you haven't got MetaMask, you can get it. Looks like this. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it. But yeah, you put it in your MetaMask here, and then you can go to the Ad Astra portal, which is ad astraelroncom And here you can change your asset UTK from Ethereum to Elrond. You can change the network there. And then once you've done that, you can put it into your MyR app. The other way you can do it is you can withdraw it to Binance, okay? And then when it's in Binance, you can export it as Alrond. So you can import it on the Ethereum network and export it on Alrond. But with these kind of things, what I generally suggest is that you put it into something that you're comfortable moving around. I mean, for me, that's usually Bitcoin or USDT or, of course, eGold because that's got super low transaction fees. Move your asset into that, even if it's only temporarily. Um, and then move it into the wherever you want it and then change it back into the asset that you want. And what I normally do with that, I normally just pick the market at the right kind of time. So, you know, it makes a favorable kind of trade at the same time and that covers any any fees that you have to pay along the way. Uh, I did also remember when the podcast hour on guys were talking about the Ad Astra portal. So uh, I might just show you that. So this is a uh, podcast hour on episode 11. If you go to the time 33 minutes, 33 seconds, uh, you end up pretty much here where Stephen is talking to Alex about uh, the Ad Astra portal. I'll just play you a bit. Like literally like maybe this is just because I, we have been in the, in the ecosystem for a while when I think it just says something significant about the MyR app, the ability to transact. So just to give a high level, I moved from KuCoin to uh, MyR Dex, and I you log into MetaMask, 
and you log into your Myr DeFi wallet on like Chrome or something like that, you can use the Myr app. You can use whatever. Yeah. But it, it it connects to MetaMask, and then you say how much. You know, I mean, it's all just as straightforward yeah. as as you kind of expect, really. And it, uh, I think. The worst part was the Ethereum gas fees. Mm. There were uh, deposit. Uh, there were deposit fees outside of KuCoin taken in UTK. So I lost a little bit at UTK there, and then the gas fees to send from MetaMask to the actual bridge was another. Uh, I think that was a bigger set of fees. But thankfully, I was moving a larger amount, so the percentage wasn't all too bad. Nonetheless, it was there. Okay, so there's various ways that you could uh, move money out of KuCoin. Uh, myself, though, I would probably, you know, temporarily sell your UTK into something else, put it on Binance, and then just transfer it out from there. But, you know, each time, as I say, I would look for a, a change in the market so that you uh, you make a little profit to cover any fees. Okay, so I actually started this video on Sunday, and it's now Wednesday. I can't believe I haven't made a video uh, all those days. Uh, I did actually make one to do with um, changing the, uh, the the farms on my larger, my Aldex one. Uh, but to be honest, I was using the Locked Mex Exchange again, which finished working on Sunday night, so I didn't see much relevance of, uh, of showing that. Uh, if you are interested, I could publish it, but I, I don't know. It's probably old news now, so uh, so there's that. Um, yeah. Also, uh, the last couple of days, I've been really panicking quite a lot because I I was in three long positions on uh, on Bybit, and then of course uh, the market went heavily south, and uh, I was really underwater. I was kind of I was getting close to liquidation points because I'd gone in too heavy. I was using ten x leverage. And uh, I've gone in too high. And uh, this is because the week before, like with this one here, this was like um, uh, last week, I think. I, mean, I got quite cocky with this one. It was uh, I, I made $506 with a 5x long. And I thought, OK, if I use 10x next time, I'll make a thousand. And, uh, and I didn't. I ended up sort of like quite down. But I'll show you my results anyway, because uh, I managed to get out alive. Um, these always look scary because they're always red. If you're doing a long and you closed it with uh, basically closing the position with a with a limit order, it always comes out red. But it's actually it's actually positive. This is so. If you look at it, this was the one that closed this morning. So literally, I I just set the uh, the the take profit just just to break even really. So literally tiny percentages like two percent here. So my entry price was sixteen four three eight, and I got out at sixteen four seven two, and uh, you know I made hundred and sixty five bucks, which was uh, you know that was nice. But to be honest, I was just relieved to get out alive. Really, I uh, did some others. Uh, I did some. I did one with Bitcoin USD. That that one was Bitcoin USDT. This one's Bitcoin USD, and if I look at that one, I think I got out just about alive again yeah so you see what i mean Sixteen thousand four five eight, and i came out sixteen thousand five hundred two percent profit uh, you know the profit was what's that in the point zero one bitcoin I'm not sure what there's in dollars uh and then there was an ethereum one as well and that one here i think this was tiny so five percent and that came out as 0 0.0085 for Ethereum. So absolutely tiny profit there. But I got out alive, so so I'm really pleased about that. At one point I was actually twenty thousand dollars down and I was I was getting quite scared by it all. And uh to be honest, I wasn't sleeping too well. And uh, you know, I was kind of sleeping with like my phone next to my next to me in the bed and I was kind of checking it in the middle of the night. And I don't advise that to anyone, so please don't use too high leverage and don't do what I did with these. And I kind of, you know, saw a green candle and I FOMO'd into a long and uh, that's a seriously bad thing to do. You know, really wait for those big pullbacks, you know, wait for those scary days and you're sleeping much, much better. And to be honest, you know, that's why I couldn't get into a long down at 15, 15K because I didn't have any funds because they're all, they're all tied up in this long. So yeah, so just a little bit of advice there about buy bit. So you can do great and you can get into scary positions. At the moment, I've just 
got a bot working with Ethereum, the three commas bot, and uh, this is just 96 cents down at the moment. It's actually made $7 this morning. And I'm just checking how the bot works, by the way, before I kind of release it on the public generally. Um, but I think it's uh, it's quite profitable. It's not amazingly profitable, but um, I think it's okay. Uh, that said, I think I'm going to stop this bot very soon. We're expecting a reversal down to like 1100 with Ethereum, I think, today. We'll see how this FOMC meeting works out this afternoon, though. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, sorry about the rambling, but um, that's what I'm up to on Bybit. Uh, I am aware that I need to do a few things like talk about MEX tokenomics, MEX 2.0 to tokenomics. Um, so I will do that. Uh, I don't fully understand it at the moment, so I need to understand it properly, then make a video. So lots to do this week, and uh, yeah, it's all good. Anyway, so sorry this was a bit of a disjointed video, but thanks for watching anyway. Please do give it a like, you know, leave a nice comment, all that kind of good stuff. And make sure you're subscribed, and above all, tell your friends.